Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 27th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. A critical patch has been released for the XM mail server. Not the most popular mail server out there, but still quite popular with the Linux crowd. And according to Shodan, there are a couple million of them still out there exposed to the internet. And what of course makes this particularly dangerous is that mail servers kind of have to be exposed to the internet. So there isn't really much you can do in terms of, well, a proxy, basically putting another mail server in front of that vulnerable mail server that's kind of uncommon and as a result this is certainly something where you have to pay attention make sure you're not running xm and if you're running xm patch as quickly as possible a proof of concept exploit already has been released over the weekend and a little bit unusual for a proof of concept exploit, but in this case, it will actually open up a shell on the system. And then we got a couple of cryptocurrency news uh, that accumulated over the weekend. Uh, first of all, Coin Pouch. Coin Pouch is soft. It allows you to store various cryptocurrencies in one place. And apparently, they recently added Verge, which is a relatively new privacy-oriented cryptocurrency to their portfolio. Well, uh, sadly, they made a mistake. The exact nature of the mistake or whether it was an attack is not really clear at this point and lost users cryptocurrency in this particular case about six hundred fifty thousand dollars of verge tokens got lost and you may have noticed that this weekend cryptocurrencies really have gained quite a bit in value looks like it may be sort of one of those hot gift items or so for the holidays well uh, to summarize some of the attacks that we have seen over the last few years I published a post with about nine different attacks that we have identified so far. These are mostly attacks that affect the end user. Now, there are other attacks, of course, that affect the network itself. In particular, Bitcoin sometimes has been criticized that even though the currency is rather large based on the total market volume, the actual mining capacity is really somewhat concentrated. And there is one interesting potential attack that takes advantage of routing. Now, we all know that routing on the internet isn't necessarily the most reliable and most secure affair. BGP has long known to be vulnerable and Bitcoin does offer another target to take advantage of. Turns out that most Bitcoin transactions really pass through only three different ISPs and an interesting blog post quite nicely summarizes some of these routing attacks. The attacks themselves aren't exactly new, but I really find the write-up quite well done and somewhat comprehensible. Another issue, of course, that uh, caused quite a stir recently was the loss of a large amount of Ethereum uh, tokens due to a uh, vulnerability in this multi-signature wallet. Well, uh, there is now an interesting tool that allows you to actually do a security analysis on your smart contracts. This tool, MyThrill, just is a static code analysis uh, tool. So you run the source code for your smart contract through the tool and it will point out, out possible vulnerabilities. As any static source code analysis, it's not really meant to replace, but rather to augment a manual analysis of the code, but certainly an interesting tool that you need to look at if you are interested in writing smart contracts. And Fortinet used the long weekend to release a patch for its FortiWeb manager tool. Apparently, the tool suffers from a vulnerability that doesn't adequately verify credentials of an administrator logging in. As a result, the attacker could gain full access to Forty Web Manager, and uh, of course, that tool can be used to reconfigure web application firewalls that are connected to this instance of Forty Web Manager.
And because I forgot to mention it on Wednesday's podcast, Thanksgiving is always the anniversary of the Shield. The Shield was originally created over the Thanksgiving weekend in 2000, which I guess uh, makes the Shield now 17 years old. If you are not contributing any logs yet, uh, please consider it. Send me a note or so if you need help uh, getting set up. I'll probably publish some reminders again for our honeypot. That's probably the easiest way right now to contribute logs. If you're not interested in contributing logs, then by all means, just listen to this podcast, enjoy it, recommend it to your friends, tweet about it, and hopefully leave me some good reviews on various podcast websites. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.